have ever have happened this to you you're like ready to do you know what you're going to do as soon when you sit down and start it just does not work everything is breaking it just it's not what you want to do and you think it is become pale but it actually prompt you to find something even better to find something they're like wow that is awesome and that's what happened to me so i had a question before and it, like how you train uh, lower or models with a dream booth and i'm well it's easy i've done before videos and other things i'm like well let's update this the first what i'm going to do is install fresh new installation of esther magic and Elven 11 and of course it's very nice it's solid application it's you can go online and download it and it's just very simple installations you're going down and you get create a git clone and after git clone you're running so very simple easy installations i have it several ones of them and if you're interested i can make this another well and next what i want to do is utilize a dream booth and dream booth is one of the best way how you can train inside you can install dream booth both ways you can install through the git clone or you can go inside the stable diffusion go in extensions click on availability preload type dream booth and install this way okay well let me uncheck right here install it Oop, so you can see it well i already installed it in my case and it seems like okay so you go in installations it's showing notice i disable and i disable for reason because it seems like everything installing but when you restart your server errors errors and just refuse work and of course if i go in and look on a dream it's like two years ten months five it's a long time ago last time when it was updated and with current new technology updating it just does not work and i literally spend hours and hours see how to work fixing with pirate torch and other stuff it just cannot make it work and i start looking for solutions and certainly somebody Pension says, you know, why worried about this? You have it much better application. I'm like, okay, which one? And I did found, I did found it's called One Trainer. So let me show you right here. This is side, and you can go download code or follow very simple installations. And I will show you. So we're going to this link, but our links will be down below there. And as you're going down here, all what you need to do is just going and run git clone. Okay, and you can run this directly from your command prompt. Okay, just copy this command and run. After everything is there, you want to run install bat. But let me show you. If we go right here, you can see you have it one install that batch file right here. This one, and this is will take a little bit time to download it all of the files necessary. Not that much, but still be plus installation of those files and after it's done you just can go ahead and start ui batch so that is all i mean that is simple it's got everything there ready to run and when it's ready you'll have it like this application running okay so let's look on this one what we can do with this first i won't say it's have the very good documentation if for some reason you lost or you want to go more in details just click on a wiki and it will open a website with the well-documented features. But sometimes it's kind of helpful if you see the visual, how it's work. Well, for now, what I want to show you, we're going to create a LoRa. So I'll also show you how to do. But what you can do here, let me show you. You can train on all of these models. Look on this. A stable Diffusion 1, 1 1.5, 2, 3, 3, 5, XL. You have it also flux, pixels, stable cascade. With, I mean, you have it all of these models. You can train from here. So it is one like a treasure box with a lot of those models inside. And you know what? Workflow is set much easy because you don't need to say, well, which properties I should set, what not. All what you need to do, let's from beginning, right here says one trainer. Just go down, click, and you can see what you have here. You already have a workflow for flux LoRa pixel alphas and stable diffusion models so you can train models diffusers 
or lorus, whatever you're interested in beds, in painting, mask, and painting. I mean, it's already pre-made workflow. And they actually done very well in a wiki if you're going in documentation showing what proper is set. But I will show you a couple more tips about this as well. So for now, I'm going to take 1.5 LoRa. It's what we're going to use here. And as we said, you will notice some of this tab is changing because like in LoRa, we'll have a LoRa tab. And we'll just go from these tabs and go from left to right. You don't necessarily need to change all options, but you'll be amazed how many options there and you can modify. Okay, one workspace directory. It's a way you want to do all of the stuff and depend on availability. I'm putting on my G drive. It's my, my work drive. Kind of, you know, all this stuff happening, but you can have it maybe C or other ones or leave it by default. We'll just leave it everything kind of disable this is default settings and of course if you want to twink a little bit later you can do this but I would recommend if you do first time just do with defaults it's much easier to see what's happening and you can create kind of nice result in the end okay so we'll leave it here a punch how many preload we'll have one on this so we'll just leave it and train CUDA it's what I'm using PyTorch so it's a CUDA processors okay look everything good Let's go with the model and right here actually you want preload your base model model is what will work with for example i'm using stable diffusion 1.5 pretron it's a small model it's very good to taste that's not the best one but remember how laura work laura it's add like almost patch to the weights so it's your model still be there you can still use it without laura just normal but it's have this kind of overlay with the same latent space when it's preloaded and when you specify I want to run this through the LoRa it just going can use those weights apply um, before it's convert back to Truvia back to our image from latent space but anyway so right here we'll just specify and notice it's where you want to output by default model LoRa so it will be putting inside our folder in one training and also we have it a safe tensor you have the options on checkpoint the safe tensor same thing sensors it is um specialized code what, what's happening actually about a couple of years ago people figure out when you have a check um just normal python check point it actually can execute some of the python commands and people was clever enough start putting viruses inside because well it can execute almost any code through the Python. What this uh, safe answer does, it is illuminate. It's only read, it does not execute code. It's kind of like almost data set. In this case, I would recommend for you just use it safe answer for now as output format because it's more safe. But um, checkpoint, maybe if you want to experiment, you can do this, but most time safe answer is what the best way to go. Okay, and we'll just leave it all this default way data float 16 it's for 1.5 and you can change this okay that is all default here we we'll look on the data i'll just leave it everything default check here concept that is kind of interesting concept think about is you creating your project so for example right here you have it my concept it is a uh, face and when you create new new let's go just click new you see right here boop, create new concept you can create multiple of them and you can enable disable so which one depending you're going to work well what i'm going to do i'll click on the concept and it will open another window for us here and in concept you can see we have it work we can have it a name for our concept and i will call wofka 2 on this case very creative it will be enable we have it our path we want save and also additional variations we'll just leave it this one as default here and you'll notice you also have it options for the like cropping image adjustment so for example if you have a different collection of images you can adjust even from here those ones and we have it also text augmentation well let me show what's happening if you have it already one preset we'll turn off this turn another one click on that you can oops right here and you can see i select and it's a path where i want to actually my dad set create for my concept okay straightforward very easy 
Let's look on next what we have it on a training. This value, it's where you can tweak, but be careful because some values, well, you have two options. Yes, you can have it overtrain or undertrain your model. And what's happened when overtraining, it's mean every image what you produce look exactly the same in the same pose as your photo. So you too much weight put it on yours when it's output. Undertrain, it's where no resemblance at all on your lower when you're done. So you want to have this sweet, sweet spot. Most time, that is very good. The learning rate, uh, usually it's a zero and a minus five, so it's a zero, 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 zero. Two, here's a learning rate, a little bit higher, I think, for this, but you can a little bit decrease. Uh, but by default, you can leave it right now and see. For my opinion, it will be a little bit big changes, so if you want this. And as well, learning rate stamp, usually 200. Um, what, how many steps you want it? It's kind of not golden rule you can modify, but general, if you have about 20 images, your steps can be from 200 to 400, okay, if you have it. 40 images anywhere from 400 to 800 so you can you can see how it's going here so right there if i want to have a little bit more steps which is have a little bit more uh, processing but it will take a bit longer time i can go probably up to 400 and it will have a good result so okay learning rate i think on my opinion just a little bit too high but i usually recommend about how i say it's a, in a sixth so it's meaning zero zero this fourth it will be another zero and two so about this rate a little bit smaller will be better but we'll just leave it as default and if you don't know leave it as default as well just keep attention right here we have it our resolution and we currently train in a 512 by 512 um and because i train 512, 512 by 512 i want to be sure my images which one i have it in my like you said in the path they need to be about same resolution you can put it smaller but it does not work very well because that so preferably the resolution you train it's what your image need to be okay we have it here let's go next look on a sampling we'll just leave it as default so it's will showing us format jpeg it's what we're doing we'll leave it back up alone tools tools is very useful because when we create our images okay let me show you where's my images right here okay so we'll go in there in my images right there and this is my one training and i'm going to my training area i'm just trying to find where's my training area aha uh -huh, right there so it's my training and i'm just guys trying to navigate and you can see Vovka data set well it's my images yes and if we preview you'll notice it's covered my portraits which i've done very handsome nice face but also i have these files and this is a text files of description because many times when you write uh, when you create prompt yes you want to say um handsome man with a beard all this stuff but yeah i need to recognize this and it's needed to have the relations of the text of the descriptions to the images so you kind of train with this well when you create images you're not necessarily will have those text and you'll need to create them the one way to create them it is going here and click on the data set tool then let's go right there we'll have it open and we'll just go ahead open navigate where it's located your images and you can see it's kind of open them right here so we have our image selected next we're going right there where it says generate captions let's click on this and in generate caption uh, you will have it model bleep or w the difference is uh, bleep and bleep too it's more natural language other ones more tagging in some cases think about if you like to to do like a um, great image of beautiful princess uh, in a blue dress jumping over the moon or something i don't know like poetic language then use it bleep okay if you want to use the more taggy then use it double g or another ones and that case you have more like a young comma woman comma is more tag tag way to do it so i'll use the bleep for this by default 
folder where I want to save this. You can have a prefix on other things and create collection. And so what does it's a look on an image using clip the image recognition system and create caption. What is AIC there and attach to that image as a number. So this is I recommend to do. You don't necessarily need to do this, but it's recommended. So it's a kind of better recognition afterwards. OK, when you're done with this, this is kind of step with tool to do. You can do additional embedding if you want it, but it's more for advanced. We don't worry right now. I'm just going over. Don't worry about Claudio. Laura, it's a Laura rank again for 1.6. A 1.5, we will use it 16 rank on this. We'll leave it everything default, same as a weight type and everything. Just default work very good. And it's what I like about this specific one trainer because these workflows will help. They will have it all presets for us. So it's very nice. You open, click on preset and it's set the best options. OK, after this, you can click just on start training. And in my experience, it's, I was surprised how fast it's actually went. So it's went right there and when it's passed through everything and you can see how fast it was doing before and until it says saving your LoRa. OK, after this, LoRa should be located inside our folder. If we're going in our models, OK, with our um, one trainer, models, and you can see LoRa right there. We have a new LoRa. Then you can copy and put it, for example, inside your stable diffusion here. And uh, let's see inside how it works. So it's automatic 11.11. It's running at this time. And I'm just going to click on Alora and right here, my Alora already created. I'm going to click select. You can see it's put it Alora right there. OK, let's click on generations and we'll just put it, put it photo. Portrait. Mail, I think that should work. Let's create generate and because it refers to Alora and you can see it is obviously it does not have say the percent was a little bit different. We need to tweak a little bit more, but it definitely recognized from those pictures. It gets short face in everything. And I can put it even a male. Let's put it this way. Screaming. Okay, something a little bit more emotion, but this does not create. And you can see beautiful, obviously. It's like nightmare. Ooh, I, I, that one definitely will be nightmare she yes. But <laughs> You can see how the very fast, poorly trained Laura can affecting with a very low model. But there you go. It's how easy was creating. Overall, I think this tool is one of my favorite new tool to create model Laura. I'm going definitely to do my own flux models. I have some ideas for awesome or flux Laura's, you know, large size, all of this high resolution one. I have a great idea how to do with stylizations and other things. You also can do with in painting or painting as well, which has worked very good. And I have some special requests to create specific colors or other things or models uh, based just like on a, some household items. So we'll see how that will work in the future. And for this, subscribe, like it, be sure you don't miss those videos. And we'll see you next time.